Hey everyone, welcome back to the next Pi game tutorial. Uh, in this one, we're going to do our game over setup. So when the character actually loses all his lives, he will. <clears throat> it'll sort of clear the screen of all the enemies, clear the uh, the player, and just kind of give a game over message. So I'm in our ship.py class here. Um, what I want to do, I want to make a variable. I'm just going to throw it anywhere here, but it's called is alive, and it's going to equal true. And this is what we're going to check to see if. Uh, the player is actually dead or not. Uh, so when he actually loses all his lives, this will get flipped to false and trigger all the other events to happen. Uh, so for right now, it's set to true. And we need to go to our death method where we decrement the lives. And we'll do uh, if his lives are less than or equal to zero, we'll also set self dot uh, is alive to false. And what I'll do here, uh, I'll show you why we put this later, but I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to do self dot. Um, we need to make his uh, the, the image of him go away. We're actually going to set that right here. So I'm going to do self dot image equals. There's a million ways you can do this, but the, the easiest way right now is you can just do pi game dot surface, and then uh, so we're going to set his image instead of the ship image. We're just going to make it a blank surface. Um, it's pretty much it's it's going to be a surface that has no size, so it's just going to be invisible. So if we run our game now, um, let's go ahead and actually let's do this. Let's make this a little easier, so we can go to lives, and we'll set lives to zero. That way, that way I only have to die once. It won't take forever, and I should turn invisible when I get hit again. All right, so that works. Uh, I can still shoot because uh, technically I'm just invisible, but we got to make it figure out a way to make it where I can't shoot. So we can also do this um, wherever we do. Uh, let's let's figure out a way to do. Sorry, I'm kind of doing this on the fly, but let's look at this code. Um, so for shoot, you can do this. You can just wrap all this and just check for if that is a live variable to be true. We can do it uh, if uh, self dot is alive, meaning if I'm alive. All this code right here, I can do that. But if I'm not alive, it doesn't run any of that. So let's see if that works. And now I can't shoot either. So ship disappears. It looks like I can still get hit though. So we also need to do the same thing for the get hit uh, method. And again, there's a million ways you can do this, but for this basic tutorial, this is the way we're gonna do this. Um, so I can't get hit, I can't shoot, and we could, uh, we would also need to wrap the death, because technically, well, I can't get hit, so yeah, we don't even need to worry about the death method, so we can just leave it the way it is, because uh, it'll ne never decrement lives. Um, so that's pretty much all we need to do there. Now we need to do a clear, uh, figure out a way to do the clear screen, because I want to clear all the enemies off the screen. Um, so each individual enemy doesn't, uh, the enemy classes, like enemy and enemy two, there's no way those classes can interact with each other without going through something that knows about both of them, and that's our enemy spawner. So the enemy spawner can run code that executes on all of the enemy classes and all of our enemy objects. So we can make, uh, we can give it a method called death clear enemies. And then we can loop through every enemy. Uh, so we can access every enemy in our enemy group. And I think you can just do, it's been a while since I've done this one, but I think there's a, actually, I think you can do this. I think there's a clear function inside of the uh, pie game or the, the group object in pie game. So we can do, Self dot enemy group dot clear. This might cause it. Yeah, it's wanting something. Let's see. I don't know what it wants. What does it want? The surface. Yeah, I don't think that's really the way to do uh, do that. But we'll just loop through all the enemies. So for enemy and self dot enemy group, and we'll do enemy dot kill. So let's see if the, well, we actually need to call this somewhere. 
So now we need something that knows about the ship object. And when it sees the ship object die, it can then in turn uh, run the clear enemies function in here. So what thing can see both our enemy spawner and the ship? Well, that's our main file. That's what kind of creates all the initial objects in our game. So main creates the enemy spawner and the uh, ship. So it knows about both of those. So somewhere in here, um, we need to put, um, we can do it after the check collision. So we'll make a section that says check for game over. And this can say if uh, player dot is alive, and we actually want the negative of this, so if not player is alive, meaning if he's dead, we'll do uh, enemy spawner dot clear enemies. Uh, let's see if this works. I haven't tested this before making this video, so we might run into some issues. And bam. So now all the enemies all the enemies are clear. So that works. Now we just need our uh, game over message to display. Um, so what's the way I want to do that? Uh, let's make another... We'll make another Python file here. And we'll call it... I'll just call it alert box. And it'll just be a box on the screen that can show some messages. Uh, so we'll do class alert box. Uh, and it's going to be a sprite. So pygame.sprite.sprite. .sprite. And let's go ahead and import pygame. Import pygame. And we'll probably need the constants file. And make our constructor. Uh, All right, um, so uh, because one of our other classes we made, I think it was the lives and the score. Did we do it in the lives? Somewhere we need to actually initialize the font module. I think we did it in main. Yeah, we did that in main, so we don't have to worry about initializing that in this. It's already done for us. Um, so we'll do self.font equals pygame.font. Font. We'll access the font object from the Pygame module, and this requires a file, which we're going to do none. The none, you can pass a file path to a, um, a font you want to use, and just as long as you save it uh, in here in the actual root directory, you can just type the name of the, the font. Uh, but if you do none, Py Python comes with its own, or Pygame comes with its own font. Um, and then it wants the size. Uh, we'll just do 50 for right now. Uh, we'll do self.color equals, we'll make it red. And we will do, we'll make, do self.message, and the message it's going to say is game over. And self.image. So to create the image, uh, you have to actually access the font object, and it has a method where it can render the font into a surface object that gets stored in this image variable. So self.font.render, uh, self um, and it, it wants some uh, parameters. So the first one is what message do you want it to say? Well, we want it to do our message, so we can just do self.message. Um, the next one is you want to anti-alias it. And if you're using PyCharm, what's really cool, it'll actually tell you uh, what what it's wanting for each one of these. So you don't have to go to the Pygame documentation and look it up. Uh, no, we don't want to anti-alias it. And yep, what's the next one? The next one it wants is the color, which will do self.color, which will be red. And background is is like, what do you want? I just want the background to be transparent, so we just pass none into it. So that's our actual image, and we need to give it an update function. Uh, well, actually, sorry, we have to, we have to get the rectangular property. So self dot rect equals self dot image get rect uh, update. Eh, we'll do our we'll do our normal self. We'll give it a velocity. And maybe you want the maybe you want the text to like move around on the screen or something. And the same thing we kind of did for all our other sprites in um, all the earlier videos. We'll update the, the, the actual coordinates by doing uh, adding the velocity to the, the coordinate x and coordinate y. 
All right. Um, but now I need to set up something where when it sees the, I think I know how I want to do this. All right, let's go ahead and set the initial X and Y uh, coordinates right here. So we'll do self.rec.x equals um, C dot display. So this will be the X coordinates. So C dot display width divided by two. But remember, it's going to take the top left corner of all the text, and then that's where it's going to it's going to sit it in the middle of the screen because display width divided by two is the center, but it's going to be off center because the top left is the origin point. So we need to subtract uh, the self dot rec dot width divided by two. That should put it in the center, and then you do the same thing for y, and this will put it in the center of the screen. So c dot display height divided by 2 minus self dot rec dot height divided by 2. Um, so there we go. So actually now we can go to our main file and where we check for the game over we can also make a alert box object. So alert box equals oh, actually we have to go to the top and do from alert box import the alert box class and alert box equals an alert box object. We can actually do something cool here. Um, so say I made I called it alert box because you can use it for different messages. So let's say this game this self dot message right here we hard coded game over into that. But let's say you want to make different messages with different alert boxes. We can require uh, when you make an alert box it takes a um, a parameter called message. And then that message parameter gets stored into this message variable. So now, when we go to main and we make the alert box object right here, we can pass in game over. And if you wanted to make more throughout all your code, you could put whatever you want right here for whatever you want it to say. Uh, so I think this should work. We probably typoed something, but we'll figure it out. Yeah, so it's not showing, so let's find out why. Um, so it created an alert box object. Mm, 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 mm. Render. I just want to see if it's even making one. So we'll print T. So it doesn't look like go back to main so if I die we, we know it's getting in here because it's clearing all the enemies and then it is making an alert box oh I know why we're never updating this alert box uh, we actually need to we can do alert box. it's never running its update function so alert box dot update. You can just throw that in there. It's kind of the same as all these groups updating themselves too, but this this one's only this section's only getting ran if we're dead. If that makes sense. So this should work. Hopefully. Alright, so uh, it is creating it because it's making dot t, but we can't see it, so let's find out why. Oh, we're not drawing it. Um, and again, this is kind of a messy way to do all this, but it will work. And for a small game like this, that's all that matters. Um, so let's go down here. It's because we're not drawing it to the screen. So we'll do, uh, we'll put it on top of everything. So we'll do, and it has to be only if the player's dead. So if not player is alive, alert uh, box draw. Oh, it actually doesn't have a draw method. If it's thrown into a group, um, actually, we'll do this just to make it a little bit more organized. Sorry if this is a little confusing, but what I want to do is I'm going to make where we created all our objects up here. I'm going to make a new object called alert box group, and it'll equal a Pygame group. So this is the group we're going to, when we make the alert box, we'll throw it in here, and that's what we can put at the bottom to tell it to draw anything in that group. So we created the alert box here. 
right underneath it, we're going to do alert box group dot add, and we're going to add the alert box to it. All right, and then what we can do is where we do all of our updates, we can just throw it right here. Alert box dot update. Anything in that group will get updated if it exists. Alert box group. And then down here with our draw methods, we can put it on top of everything. We can do alert box uh, group dot draw. Draw it to the display. All right, let's see if that works. There you go. So now it shows game over, and it's still printing out our T's. Um, there's a lot of stuff I wanted to add to this game, but I feel like with the way we've made it, I, I made it in a way that you can... Uh, it's, it's kind of easy if you're just getting into Pi game to understand things. Um, but the more complex a game gets, you can see how some of these files, like this main file, can get real cluttered. Um, so I want to do another tutorial series eventually to show how you would really go about doing this to make a, uh, a game that has a lot of layers and mechanics and objects to where this, it, it makes everything way more organized and manageable. Uh, but for something small like this, this will work. and. Really, at the end of the day, uh, if you feel like you're doing something like the wrong way, as long as it works and you understand how it works, that's all that really matters. But uh, yeah, just practice with it, have fun, uh, and let me know if there's any other like Py game or Python modules or Python tutorials you want to see from me, and I will get to making them. Everyone, have a good one. Bye.